Are you a chiropractor who's recently graduated and you're not sure if you should start your own practice or maybe you've been out for a while and you're ready but you don't even know where or how to begin? Keep watching and I'm going to share with you the five steps to starting your own chiropractic practice. Hi, my name is Dr. John Lee and I'm a chiropractor in Southern California running an ultra successful million dollar practice helping many people in our community. And I also consult and teach chiropractors all across the country how to build the practice of their dreams. In this video, I'm going to lay out my five steps to starting a successful chiropractic practice. I have followed and used each of these steps in establishing my own thriving practice. And we have grown every year since. Being a small business owner can be daunting and very stressful. But don't worry, you don't have to figure all this out by yourself. Docs like me have gone through this before, and I'm more than happy to share with you how to get your practice started. So if you're watching this video, this may be for you. Step one in starting your own carpenter practice, believe it or not, is by being an associate doctor for two years in a successful chiropractic practice. If you've just graduated and you're eager and anxious to get your practice open, this may not be what you want to hear. But this is exactly what I did in my first two years after graduating from chiropractic school. At the time, as I was going through my associateship, I did not appreciate it and at times wanted to quit prematurely to go open my own practice. But I stuck it out for my two year commitment and now looking back, I can truthfully tell you it was one of the most essential first steps in having a successful chiropractic career. Now be very careful and selective on where you are an associate doctor. The reason being, this will lay a foundation and set some initial habits on how you will be a chiropractor in the future. I was very fortunate to land my first job with a very successful chiropractor who was a great businessman as well as a great clinician. So not only did I learn the ins and outs of how he ran his business, but I also learned from him how to be a better chiropractor, which meant how to do proper examinations, consultations, how to analyze and mark x-rays, and how to adjust patients. Adjusting was probably the most important thing I learned from my senior doctor during those two years. A lot of what I learned from my boss during those two years, I still see myself doing now 20 plus years in practice and I am very grateful for what I was taught under his guidance. Think of it this way, chiropractors, when we're done with our four-year doctorate program, once you graduate, then we're able to go out in the real world to see patients. However, we do not have a two-year residency like medical doctors do after their four-year schooling. So I view an associate job for two years kind of like a finishing school or your time to really refine your skills as a doctor before going out and doing it on your own. Step two of starting your own chiropractor practice is finding the right location. This should be a place where you can see yourself being for the next 20 to 30 years. The reason is once your practice is well established and busy, it is hard to start all over somewhere else again. You must consider personal reasons such as if you plan to have a family. Is this a great place to raise a family? Is it safe? Are the schools well rated? Will you be near your family such as your parents, your spouse's parents? Trust me, if you're going to have kids and I have four, having family support from grandma and grandpa is so helpful and necessary. Plus, it's just so much nicer to see your whole family for holidays and not to have to travel far. Also, what is the cost of living? Do you want to own a home? Next, consider the population of the city. How many people live there? What's the median income? Is it a white collar town, blue collar town, or a mix? Is it the big city or the suburbs? I recommend creating a simple checklist and seeing if the town checks off most of the items on your wish list. Ultimately, if you are a great chiropractor and great clinician, and it doesn't matter too much where you open up your practice because I have worked with and met chiropractors all across the country and even in different countries of all different demographics and settings such as big city, rural, suburbs. And you can have success anywhere. So you don't necessarily have to go for a city with a huge population and a high income. There's also the topic of should the office be street front visible or can it be in a corporate building tucked inside? And I would say it doesn't matter. I've been practicing for almost 20 years in a corporate setting, 
and it has not slowed us down one bit. Step three to starting your own chiropractor practice is to find a chiropractic office that's already established where you can be an independent contractor and rent space temporarily. The purpose of this is to build your patient base. And this is a way that you can do it with low risk and the least financial obligation. Typically, there's gonna be a percentage split with the owner of the practice. And you definitely wanna make sure that there is no non-compete clause because you will be planning to move your patient base nearby down the street or not too far from that location. This is going to be a stepping stone to finally getting into your physical office space. This is exactly what I did to build up my patient base before finding and moving into my actual physical office location. Step four to starting your own carpenter practice is to set up two to three marketing faucets or sources that produce new patients consistently. What did I do? I did spinal screenings, business networking meetings through LaTip, and I ran Google AdWords. You must have a steady stream of new patients coming in to build and sustain your practice. Back at that time, I was going to the local gym one, two, sometimes three times a week to do screenings for a couple hours at a time. I was attending a business networking breakfast once a week on Thursdays, and I was running my own Google AdWords, which is when Google Ads started at that time and they were simple and easy to do on your own. The reason why you want to have two to three marketing faucets is because you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket because then if one slows down or dries up, then you have one or two others that are still producing and providing new patients to your business. Once you are consistently seeing 50 patient visits a week minimum, then you are ready to move. Now preferably, I recommend being at around 100 patient visits or more before you move into your own office location, which is what I did. Step five to starting your own carpenter practice is to find your office space and move in. Now, there are many logistics to this. You need to get your business license. You need to design a floor plan and layout. There needs to be a build out that can take a couple of months. You'll need equipment, treatment tables, computers, software, furniture, reception chairs. You'll need to establish your own billing system. You'll need to hire your first employees. There will also be a lease negotiation. And here's a pro tip. Make sure you ask for at least three months of free rent. This is called rent abatement. And there's even more things that you'll have to take care of. My advice to you is to create one to two long checklists of all the things that come to mind that you'll have to do to set up this actual physical office space. This is going to take a lot of hard work, long days, sweat, but it'll be all worth it. And eventually, you will be open for business. You want to contact your city's chamber of commerce and request a ribbon cutting ceremony where you can take pictures of the grand opening. Congratulations, you now have your first chiropractic practice. I'd like to give you three more key tips for setting up your own chiropractic practice. The first tip is to get a good accountant, one that can do your bookkeeping, track your expenses, provide you with P&Ls, which are profit and loss statements, and you'll need them to guide you on how much you need to put away for taxes. Basically, you need a good accountant on your team. I recommend asking your chiropractic colleagues for a referral for someone who works a lot with chiropractors that knows the ins and outs of the business. Tip two is to have a marketing plan in place. This will allow you to hit the ground running once you open the doors. I mentioned earlier that you wanna have two to three marketing faucets, but now with more space, you'll have a higher capacity to see more new patients and patient visits. So you may want to establish a fourth and fifth marketing faucet. So you want to make sure that you create and write out an effective marketing plan for your first year of business. Tip three is I recommend consulting with experts or mentors or friends who are in business. When it comes to step number five from earlier, all the logistics and setting up and creating the actual office space will go so much faster and smoother and easier if you have the guidance of a close friend or an expert. I hired my first consultant during the last six months of being an independent contractor. And he's the one that actually designed our office layout and gave us so much more direction in all the specifics and little things that we need to do to actually be open for business. It saved us so much time. 
Remember, there are many people who have opened businesses before you, so there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Just ask for help. If you like the information that I share with you, please do me a favor and subscribe so you can receive more updates in the future. I'll be sharing with you all kinds of business tips that we just don't get in chiropractic school, as well as tips on how to be an even better doctor of chiropractic for serving your patients. I'll see you then.